I officially transferred the house to my parents, knowing the divorce was becoming inevitable. With a cold, detached expression, Henry pointed at me and demanded that I leave, his voice laced with venomous insults. His parents watched, their approving smiles making it clear they stood behind his cruel words. Despite the hostility, I stayed composed, fully prepared for this moment. I had packed my bags long before, ready for this day. Without hesitation, I walked out, leaving them oblivious to the consequences that would soon unfold. I'm Amy, and I recently celebrated my 45th birthday. It's been quite a while since Henry and I were married, and our children have grown up forging their own paths away from home. Once an ordinary salaried worker, my life took a turn when a friend introduced me to teaching others how to create handmade accessories. This shift from hobby to profession has been transformative, bringing me immense joy through my interactions with students and the daily act of creating. While some might doubt the wisdom of turning a passion into a career, I find deep fulfillment in it. Henry and I met by chance at my previous workplace, where he was associated with a client company. Our frequent encounters at work-related events blossomed into a deeper relationship, leading us to marry for love. After four wonderful years, we welcomed a lively and healthy son who has since graduated from a prestigious university and is now thriving in a happy marriage of his own. Yet, despite our son's achievements, Henry and I have struggled over the years. The gentle, thoughtful man I married transformed into someone much harsher, becoming increasingly demanding and treating me more like a servant than a partner. His expectations shifted daily, turning our home into a battleground over the smallest issues. As his verbal outbursts intensified, I found myself yearning for a fresh start, desperate to escape the turmoil. However, an unpaid mortgage kept me tethered to our current situation. To make matters worse, Henry inexplicably quit his job and now spends his days idly at home, leaving me to handle all the household responsibilities alone. The house we live in is especially dear to me as I finance its recent reconstruction with my savings. It stands as a testament to my dreams and hard work, a space crafted for my vision and effort. The spacious kitchen, thoughtfully designed, showcases my taste. Although Henry had some input in the layout, I ultimately covered all the expenses and ensured my preferences were realized. Building this house was both a challenge and a joy, embodying everything I had hoped for. Unfortunately, the financial burden was heavier than expected, forcing us to take on a larger loan than we had planned. Taking on such a significant financial burden in our 40s felt overwhelming, but the promise of happiness in our new home gave us the strength to manage the debt. Yet Henry remained dissatisfied. His input was only minimally reflected in the final design, and he frequently complained, dismissing the expenses as wasteful and akin to throwing money away. Despite his grievances, I chose to focus on the joy our new home brought, trying to ignore his discontent. As time passed, Henry's complaints grew quieter, and he began to express his frustration through childish behaviors, like scattering trash and creating messes to irritate me. I'd often found myself wondering when this cycle of conflict would come to an end. A few months after we moved in, as these thoughts swirled in my mind, the doorbell rang unexpectedly. We weren't expecting any visitors, which sparked my curiosity. Just as I was about to answer the door, Henry jumped up and moved to open it himself, as if he knew who it might be. Soon, cheerful voices and laughter floated in from the entrance. When the living room door finally swung open, I was taken aback to see my in-laws, Willie and Catherine. My relationship with them had always been strained. From the moment we announced our marriage, they had been cold and critical of my background, maintaining an uncomfortable distance even on our wedding day. Their sporadic visits since then always left me uncertain about how to navigate each encounter. Despite the lack of recent communication, their unexpected arrival left me feeling unsettled. I greeted them politely, though a hint of tension lingered in the air. They walked past me without a word, pointedly ignoring me and even brushing against my shoulder as they explored the house. Their envy was palpable as they admired the spacious, well-designed kitchen. Meanwhile, Henry reveled in their attention, proudly showing them around. When they returned, their faces reflected satisfaction, but Henry's mood shifted sharply. He turned to me with a stern expression and loudly commanded me to prepare tea and snacks quickly. Taken aback by his sudden outburst, I hurried to fulfill his request. Feeling the weight of the moment as I set about making tea and snacks. Despite my efforts to be welcoming, Henry's parents appeared unsatisfied. Willie quickly polished off his snacks and tea, offering only a brief compliment about the house's interior. 
Amidst this, Henry, beaming with pride, extended an invitation for his parents to move in with us, hardly acknowledging my presence at all. As they listened to Henry and prepared to leave, I stood back, watching their retreating figures. The gap between Henry and me felt immense, especially as I saw him so animated and joyful with his parents, a sight of him I hadn't witnessed in a long time. After Henry's invitation, his parents began visiting more frequently. What started as a few times a month quickly escalated to several times a week, and soon they were almost here every day. With each visit, their criticisms of me intensified, and Henry did nothing to intervene. Instead, he grew increasingly blameful, voicing relentless complaints about how I was supposedly upsetting our son. Amid the mounting challenges, I found myself unable to voice my growing frustration, settling instead for constant apologies. The visits from my in-laws became more frequent, often occurring while I was away. Henry and his parents left clear evidence of their activities behind. Beer cans, empty bottles, and alcohol spills that stained our new rug. Despite my objections, our home began to smell of booze and felt increasingly neglected. Henry's complaints about my contributions felt particularly ironic, given that he did nothing to help around the house. His involvement in gambling added another layer of stress. Betting slips frequently appeared, highlighting the financial risks and the futility of trying to explain the dangers of his habit. The losses were especially painful as the money wasted was hard-earned for my relentless efforts. As the in-laws' visits became more frequent, they often timed their arrivals for when I was out. This made it increasingly difficult for me to manage the situation or assert any control over the growing chaos and discomfort in our home. One day, when I unexpectedly returned home early, I found Henry and his parents comfortably settled in our living room. Surprised, I confronted them, but their dismissive responses and snarky attitudes made it clear they saw my presence as an annoyance. Frustrated and stressed by their insolence, I realized I had reached my breaking point. Instead of succumbing to my emotions, I resolved to devise a plan to manage the situation effectively. In the midst of this turmoil, an unexpected incident unfolded. On a day I would typically be away, the in-laws arrived unannounced, their surprise at finding me home unmistakable. I couldn't resist making a sarcastic remark about their usual avoidance of me, but they brushed it off as they confidently entered the house. Henry greeted them with a warm smile and proceeded to show them around from the kitchen to the bathroom. As I watched a thorough inspection, suspicion crept in. It felt like there was a hidden agenda behind their visit. When they left, their satisfied expression suggested they had uncovered something significant. Curious and increasingly cautious, I questioned their need for such thorough inspections and wondered if there was something they felt compelled to tell me. I had previously warned Henry not to pry into my concerns, insisting it was none of his business, yet his behavior suggested he was hiding something. I suspected he was trying to manipulate the situation, though identifying his exact intentions proved difficult. My best option was to quietly observe and decipher the unfolding scenario. Then one day, after work, I returned home to a startling sight. A large moving truck parked in front of our house, emblazoned with the logo Moving Center. Henry was deep in conversation with the truck driver and several representatives. When our eyes met, he quickly averted his gaze and hurried back inside. To my shock, my in-laws arrived at the same time. They greeted me casually as if nothing were wrong, while Henry welcomed them with open arms, ushering them into the house. The tension in the air was palpable, signaling that significant changes were about to impact our living situation. As I followed Henry and his parents inside, I was struck by the dramatic transformation of our home. The familiar furnishings and personal items that once filled the space had vanished, replaced by my in-laws' outdated furniture, arranged as if they had already moved in. Sitting on the sofa, I was surrounded by their smirking smiles, radiating a sense of smugness. Their demeanor made it clear that this change wasn't spontaneous but part of a well-orchestrated plan. Feeling a mix of anxiety and determination, I opted to stay silent and observe what would unfold next. The anxious glances exchanged between my in-laws only intensified the already tense atmosphere. Soon, they hinted that there was something important they needed to discuss, suggesting an ulterior motive. Stealing myself and maintaining a calm facade, I listened as Henry took a deep breath and revealed that he had sold the house to his parents. He then proposed we get a divorce and his parents nodded in agreement, their smug smiles betraying their satisfaction in orchestrating this situation. Despite the shocking revelation, I managed to stay composed, 
Having suspected their scheming all along, I quickly signed the divorce papers of my wedding ring on the table and announced my decision to leave. My suspicions about Henry and his parents' deceitful behavior during their frequent visits while I was away had prompted me to take precautionary measures. I had installed surveillance cameras throughout the house which I could access via my smartphone. Initially, I monitored their casual interactions but it wasn't long before I stumbled upon footage that confirmed my worst fears. In the video, Henry and his parents were seen happily discussing the sale of the house. Shocked but now fully aware of their intentions, I began to plan my next steps carefully. Armed with evidence from the surveillance, I started searching for a new place to live, determined to move on from this betrayal. Taking decisive action, I initiated the transfer of the home loan from my name to Henry's. If they intended to force me out of our shared home, it only seemed fair that they should assume the mortgage payments and all associated responsibilities. With a monthly payment of $3,800, an amount drawn from my hard-earned salary. I had serious doubts about whether Henry and his parents, considering their current employment situations, could handle such a financial burden. Determined to sever all financial ties, I refrained from offering any support. Now free from the burdens of that relationship, I moved into a new, well-organized home furnished with fresh items, eager to start a new. On a tranquil day off, Savoring the luxury of sleeping in past noon, my relaxation was abruptly shattered by the doorbell. To my surprise, Henry and his parents stood at my doorstep, uninvited and unexpected. They barged in without waiting for an invitation and spread a document in front of me, accusing me of illegally altering the loan terms without their consent. I was taken aback by their audacity. They explained that shortly after I had left the old house, they received notification of the loan name change. Henry and his parents, all currently unemployed, were stunned, claiming they couldn't afford the steep monthly payments. In a heated outburst, Henry insisted they wouldn't cover the costs. I tried to reason with them, explaining the consequences of defaulting on the loan including how interest and late fees could significantly increase their financial burden. Henry listened, initially skeptical, but began to grasp the seriousness of the situation. When Henry looked up the loan information online, shock and distress washed over his face. I suggested it was time for them to explore new job opportunities for a fresh start. Their expressions grew even paler as the reality of their situation sank in. They confessed to having no savings or assets, with Henry burdened by significant gambling debts and lacking the steady income. They pleaded for understanding and assistance, referencing the years we had spent together. Unmoved by their appeals, I shut the door firmly determined to distance myself from any attempts to salvage the relationship. Frustrated, they reported me to the police, which ultimately resulted in their removal from my property. Due to their financial struggles, they eventually moved to a more affordable apartment on the outskirts of town, where Henry managed to secure a part-time job to support his family. Meanwhile, my life continued on an even keel. I focused on my job and, in my spare time, started a blog about handmade crafts. The blog gained traction, leading to a substantial increase in my monthly income as requests for workshops and courses began to pour in. I had no intention of remarrying and was determined to navigate life on my own terms. One day, I stumbled upon an old household account book from the early days of my marriage. As I flipped through its pages, memories of our financial struggles flooded back. With a renewed sense of purpose, I resolved to carve out a new path toward happiness on my own. After reflecting on the past, I returned the account book to the shelf, ready to focus on creating a fulfilling future. 